Good afternoon, traders and investors. Will back here with another one coming to a Wednesday market recap. Hope all of you had a very good day of trading today. And in today's markets, guys, well, of course, we got the highly anticipated rate cuts. The Federal Reserve coming in with a very big one today, 0.5% as a whole, guys. And that was the expectation leading in today's trading as well. Now, we were supposed to have a very volatile day of trading today. The expected move on the S&P 500 was supposed to be 1.2% up or down. The expected move on the QQQs was supposed to be around 1.5% up or down. But as you can see from my watch list right here, you can see the moves were fairly muted. Not much in the ways of volatility at all. So exactly why was that the case, guys? Why did the markets not react violently one way or another when it was such a highly anticipated day? Well, we're going to obviously take a look at that in today's video and give my thoughts on the interest rate decision today. Thereafter, we're going to take a look at our major technical analysis rundown in terms of our major market market indexes, followed by our big tech names and see whether or not there is still some opportunities left in the market right now, or maybe should we just sit on our hands and wait for potential discounts to be had in the next few weeks. So after that, guys, that is pretty much going to be everything because I do not have a portfolio update for today. I will most likely save that for the Friday session. Not many new trades made today by myself, but in the event I do make some tomorrow, I will definitely keep you guys updated. So without further ado, guys, a lot to cover in today's video. Let's jump right into the action. Spy down about 0.3%, QQQs down about 0.43% on the day. And as you can see, guys, everything pretty much ending in the red. That was not the case for a majority of the day guys as a matter of fact the indexes were largely flat on the day and you did have some decent rotation however the fomc meeting came out and we really had a massive pop uh at the 2 p.m mark guys the spy was up about 0.5 percent at that time the qqqs were up closer to 0.8 percent and then they kind of gave it all back in a classic classic pop and drop fashion after the news so a lot of anticipation a lot of anticipation leading into the event and then met with a little bit of sell the news and profit taking in the process let's take a look at the heat map right here you will see that overall guys the market was fairly decent here today, right? We did have some decent uh, moves by a few of our big tech names, Meta, Google, and Apple, keeping it up to the upside. Semiconductor is not having the best day at all. Software companies as well, not having the best day at all either. Financials pulling back, healthcare pulling back as well, even though the sector was mixed in with a few green names in there. And some of your more interest rate sensitive names also to the downside, guys. Even though these ones have been running very, very hard into this event, everything was pretty much in profit taking form today and it does make sense here guys a lot of volatility just got taken off the table there was a lot of good gains in our interest rate sensitive sectors leading in to this event today so just a short form profit taking in my humble opinion but nothing truly bad to speak about in the markets today in terms of your one day relative performance guys you can see how mixed the market was right not too many losses the losses weren't that big but they were losses pretty much across the board only communication services making it out in the green today that was largely led by google and meta of course but everything else to the downside pretty much it doesn't really erase our beautiful performance over the one last week however everything still remaining decently in the green despite today's selling so could that could today's price action guys cascade into more selling very possibly we'll take a look at that later on in the video before we get into more technical analysis let us jump right into those rate cuts guys and explain exactly what happened today. The first thing that I wanted to show you guys is one of the things that Jerome Powell said, the very last question of the uh, Federal Reserve meeting today that was given by one reporter asking, you can't really hear the question too well, but she's asking essentially if the current economic slowdown that we've been seeing, is it possibly leading into a deepening of a slow or a deeper form slowdown or a recession? Take a look at what Jerome Powell had to say on this matter right, um, right now to a shock now that could tip it into recession? I don't think so. I, I, I don't, there's, as I look, well, let me look at it this way. I don't see anything in the economy right now that suggests that the likelihood of a recession, sorry, of a downturn is elevated. Okay, I don't see that. You see, you see growth at a solid rate you see inflation coming down and you see a labor market that's that's still at very solid levels it's so so i i don't really see that now thank you 
So that is pretty much Jerome Powell dispelling any concerns over an, a larger form economic slowdown or potentially even a recession. They are really trying to go for the soft landing here, guys. And this leads us into our next point. Why did the market react such in a such muted fashion today rather than a very large form fashion? Well, it's because the market got exactly what it was already pricing in. The market was already pricing in a 0.5% um, interest rate cut, and the market was already pricing in a soft landing scenario. Anything that would have gone outside of those boundaries would have warranted a larger reaction move from the markets. But since we literally got exactly what the markets were expecting, that's why the move, in my humble opinion, is a bit more muted right now. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the meeting, guys. So Fed meeting recap, Chair Jerome Powell defends central bank's decision to go big with a first rate cut. Let's jump into a few of the quotes here that were noteworthy, in my humble opinion. So we're trying to achieve a situation where we restore price stability without the kind of painful increase in unemployment that has come sometimes with disinflation. Now, very good point by Jerome Powell right here, guys, right? They obviously have a dual mandate. Now, in the process of trying to bring down inflation by increasing interest rates through the roof, they obviously, they obviously do not want to crush the economy in the process. An economic slowdown as a result of high interest rates is on the table, guys. That is always in the cards. It is just a byproduct of having high interest rates. But is the damage too far gone? Here, Jerome Powell is saying that is not, right? They're trying to restore price stability without the pain in uh, unemployment being caused. And so far, they are doing a good job, guys. The unemployment rate is still around historic lows. It has upticked from the utmost lows of a few months ago, but I wouldn't say it's too high either right now. Let's move on further. Powell says the economy is in good shape. The US economy is in good shape. It is growing at a solid pace. Inflation is coming down. And we've seen that from the most recent GDP report as well here, guys. There is nothing that signals an overall recession right now in the economy. The soft landing is still in the on the table right now. That is what the current data shows. Now, in the event the data gets worse um, in an exponential way, right? If the data gets worse a lot faster than expected, we can revise these estimates. But as of now, guys, right, I would be lying to you if I said that a recession is priced into the data right now. It just isn't. Now, moving on further. So, Powell says the Fed is in no rush to get this done, commenting about whether or not the pace of 50 basis point cuts could continue into the future. Here's what he had to say. There's nothing in the SEP, the Summary of Economic Projections, that suggests the committee is in a rush to get this done. The process evolves over time, aka they will remain data dependent. The so-called dot plot indicated that 19 FOMC members, both voters and non-voters, see the benchmark Fed funds rate at 4.4% by the end of the year, equivalent to a target range of 4 Four and a quarter to about four and a half. That would be a 1% interest rate decrease from, well, yesterday through the end of December. So we already got 50 out of the way. And then before the end of the year, we're probably going to get another 50. There's only two meeting, meetings remaining, one in November and one in December. So whether that's 50 in November and then nothing in December or a 25 and 25, nobody knows at this point. But one thing is for sure, the expectation is for another 50 basis point reduction. Now, through 2025, the central bank's forecasts interest rates landing at 3.4%, indicating another full percentage point in cuts. So over the course of next year in 2025, guys, expecting another full 1% in cuts. Now, obviously, this can change with the data, but this is right now the forecast for, for uh, the foreseeable future. Through 2026, rates are expected to fall to 2.9% with another half point reduction. This is kind of where the Fed wants to stand in its long-term expectancy. We will go over the summary of economic projections in just a few short minutes, but I want to take you through the highlights of the article first. Now, Fed Chair Powell, don't assume this is the new pace, talking about the size of the rate reductions, right? We've waited, and I think the patience has really paid dividends in the form of our confidence that inflation is moving sustainably under 2%. So I think that is what enables us to take this strong move today. I do not think that anyone should look at this and say, oh, this is the new pace. I think we're going to go carefully meeting by meeting and make our decisions as we go. Once again, reiterating the fact that they have been patient so far, they've been data dependent, but now guys, the 50 basis point reduction is not seen as a panic move by the Fed. This, in my humble opinion, is seen more as the Fed trying to not get behind the curve rather than acknowledging that they potentially might already be behind the curve, right? So it's not necessarily a reactionary cut to bad data. It's 
It's more so of a um, continuation of the soft landing narrative. They want to stay as much as possible ahead of the bad data because they know that the data right now is slightly lagging, of course. Now, moving on further. So 50 basis point rate cuts are rare in recent history, except for emergency cuts during crisis events. Take a look at this. This more aggressive reduction indicates that the Federal Reserve has gotten comfortable that the downtrends that the downward trends in inflation are sustainable and is now redirecting its focus to pulling off a soft landing. Talking about the fact that inflation right now, guys, is pretty much gone. We've been saying this on the channel for the last two, three months. It's gone. It's not coming back, in my humble opinion. Now they have to focus on the labor market, guys. And the one way to ensure that the labor market remains strong and that companies retain uh, openings or, or job openings, rather, is to ease the pressure off of the economy by reducing the interest rate. So that's what they're targeting right now. They're not concerned about uh, whether or not an interest rate reduction is going to cause a resurgence in inflation. Let's move on a little bit further. So uh, Powell says key inflation measure will be 2.2% in August, hinting at the fact that once again, the Federal Reserve gets the data before us. We don't have this data yet. So it's very funny that he was able to say that publicly today. A key measure of the pace of price increases will show inflation fell to a 2.2% rate in August, Fed Powell said on Wednesday, he's talking about the PCE numbers that we don't have yet. So the central bank leader said the PCE price index got closer to the Fed's 2% goal, having been at 2.5% in July. The Bureau of Economic Analysis will not release the final PCE number for August until late September, right? So he's already saying it's going to come in at 2.2, which is very close to the 2% target. Once again, reiterating, guys, inflation is no longer a problem for us. Our patient approach over the past year has paid dividends. Inflation is now much closer to our objective, and we have now gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. Moving on further, guys. And once again, quick little tidbit right here. This doesn't mean, guys, that uh, especially in terms of the price of groceries, prices of insurance, prices of rent and stuff like that, it doesn't mean that we're going to undo a lot of the rises and increases that have happened over the past three, four years. That is not what you measure when you're measuring inflation. If you want to talk about the increases in prices of bread, eggs, milk, and other things like that over the last three, four years, you have to look at cumulative inflation, right? That is not the same thing. This is what we have, what we call a rolling inflation method measure. It's it's trying to tell us whether or not things are getting worse or moving back to a sustainable pace of inflation. Inflation is a normal part of any economy, guys. We will always have inflation, right? The key is keeping inflation at a sustainable growth path. So that's what they're talking about right there. Now, before last, Fed cut may have been too aggressive, but should support risk on assets. Interesting. There are not many indications that the economy is slowing in the most recent numbers. A larger cut probably was not needed out of the gate, but that should support risk on asset allocation. So once again, reiterating, guys, that the 50 basis point cut was not needed. The data is just not that bad yet. But the Federal Reserve is trying to get a head start on the rate cut cycle and trying to get a head start on really protecting the soft landing scenario and protecting full employment as a whole, right? So those are pretty much a lot of the highlights that I wanted to show you guys from the Federal Reserve meeting. Now let's go over the summary of economic projections, uh, which is basically your forecast, right? For this year, next year, and on the longer duration rate. Take a look at your change in real GDP, 2024, 25, 26, and 27. 2% guys, this is not recessionary forecasts at all. And if you take a look at the range, you will see the range as well is not that bad. It does start to taper. It does start to pull back here. The lower end of the range is at 1.3 for 2025, but that is still not recessionary guys. That is not negative GDP. 1.3 is at the lower end of what you would expect in a healthy economy, but is still not raising any major red flag concerns. 1.7, 1.8 is really standard of what we've been seeing over the last few years years in terms of the unemployment rate. So how do they view the jobs market? Well, 2024, you guys can see this, right? 24, 25, 26, 27, 4.4, 4.4, 4.3, and 4.2. Still near historical lows, a little bit higher than the projections we got in June. So acknowledging that the labor market is struggling a little bit right now, but definitely not runaway unemployment, which is what we don't want to see. And you can take a look at the long-term ranges as well, guys. Nothing bad to see there at all. And finally, for your PCE inflation, take a look at this. 2024, 2.3, 25, 2.1, 2 and 2026, back to our targets, arguably even next year, back to our targets as well, guys. Take a look at your ranges right here. You can see the ranges, the ranges do come into our expected levels over the next few years, guys. 
So this, in other words, is very, very, very solid, guys. Nothing bad to say about this report at all, which is largely why the markets weren't really reacting in a very volatile way in either direction. These are pretty much very um, soft expectations, right? Or very bullish expectations, rather. Nothing bad to see in the data at all at this current point in time for the summary of economic projections. So all in all, guys, I'm very happy with the way that this Federal Reserve meeting went. It is pretty much exactly what the market was pricing in. Now, in terms of forward catalysts, what could possibly undo this soft landing scenario? Well, number one that we have to keep a close eye on, guys, is going to be corporate earnings in Q3. Q3 earnings start at the early part of October and run through about mid-November. Now, we know in the past two quarterly earnings, guys, in the last six months, companies have been hinting at weakness, consumer weakness, macroeconomic slowdown, right? Now, so far, their guidance has been okay. It hasn't been the best. It hasn't been pointing to growth, but we haven't seen, we haven't seen significant weakness in guidance. During Q3 earnings, if companies give us significant weakness in forward earnings and possibly dwindling profit margins, then we have to be very careful because that would not be good for stock prices as a whole. It would not single it would not signal that we're in for a deep form recession, but it would probably scare the markets a little bit and would lead to possibly a little bit of a correction, possibly a 10% down move in the S&P and the QQQs if those corporate earnings are not good. That is the one thing, guys, that maybe stands in the way of the continuation of this equities bull market right now. But in terms of recessionary uh, catalysts, we just do not have them just yet. We'll stay data dependent on the channel as we always do and keep a clear focus on GDP numbers and on your jobs numbers too, right? But for the most part, guys, very happy with the way today's results went. So that is pretty much everything we had to say, guys. As I said, we'll take this one day at a time on the channel and continue to uh, continue to identify the best possible setups in these markets right now. But as of now, guys, not much has changed, right? I was willing to look to wait and look at the data and potentially change my trading style if ever I didn't like the data uh, that was coming out and I didn't like the forward projections. But as of now, it's kind of just business as usual. Focus on high quality companies, Focus on um, high quality setups as well, right? Such as the types of trades that I've been showing on the channel and focus on the sectors that tend to outperform during a, a period of slight economic slowdown, which currently still stands to be healthcare, consumer staples, which is XLP, and even possibly utilities and real estate. Those should continue to perform fairly well with financials as a little bit of a kicker. But obviously, guys, there may just be a case in point for adding a little bit onto the risk on trade, talking potentially about Bitcoin, talking potentially about the IWM Russell, right? That could be a very nice um, positional trade that we could possibly start shortly and just kind of let it ride because there is a scenario in which the Fed sticks the soft landing. We do not get any form of recession at all and risk on assets just go to the absolute moon through this rate cut cycle. So I do want to be positioned, guys. I've been waiting for today uh, to get the kind of green light on that. And I think that it may just be time on a next on a next dip. If we get a dip in the next week or two, it may just be a time to start building a little bit of position there in the risk on trade. So I want to stay balanced. I want to stay, I want to keep a lot of my portfolio in a more defensive aspect, but I do want to start taking a little bit of that risk on trade as well, just to kind of counterbalance the portfolio, right? So now moving into our technical analysis portion of the video, let's go over the indexes real quick. So the SPY down about 0.3%. They did hit a new all-time high today. So congratulations to the SPY bulls for fracturing a new all-time high. It just did not last too long before we got a little bit of a pullback. So in the event, guys, that the markets continue pulling back in a sell the news event after the Fed meeting today, well, the next area that we should be looking at is right down here, 555 down about 554, looking for a potential daily higher low for possible further trend continuation. We know the bulls have created a ton of space with this most recent move and possibly just looking for that daily trend continuation. Why? Well, because they're well on their way, guys, to a potential weekly trend expansion, looking very decent on the SPY as a whole. No red flags for the market just yet. The red flag would really come in in the event we lose all of this move and break these lows down here, guys. That would be losing the entire weekly uptrend momentum and potentially sending us back into a weekly downtrend. The red flags would only come in, in my opinion, at a break of these levels. As of now, the short-term bulls remain in full control of these markets. And the analysis is roughly the same for the QQQs as well. 
So we know that the QQQs were in a little bit of a downtrend right here. Big engulfing move after our third leg of selling. Nice engulfer right here. Looking for the daily higher low for the possible daily trend continuation. We have a lot of support below us here, guys. The moving averages are sitting right below us right now. And this whole area of support, 467 down to about 455, should be very good support for the bulls. The pure red flags once again come in if we lose these lows here, guys. Because the bulls are trying to go trying to go for the weekly trend change attempt right now but in the event we sacrifice these lows that would be confirmation of a new weekly downtrend and we'd most likely be revisiting a lot of these lower levels right there so as of now the short-term bulls are in control of the markets right now both on the daily and the weekly is looking good for some trend expansion the red flags come in if you're we to lose these lows down here so we'll take this one day at a time guys but as of now it is looking very good for a retest and continuation trend attempt Moving on to financials right now. Financials down about 0.31% today. They really tried to go for it over the course of the morning here, but getting rejected in the end portion of the day. So daily downtrend was underway. A nice engulfing move right now. What are the bulls looking to do, guys, on this pullback? Looking to set up for the daily higher lows for possible further daily trend continuation to the upside. So not looking too bad. Why do we have this bullish lean bias, guys? Because we've never lost control of the weekly. Weekly charts is looking very good right now. Just looking for some potential weekly trend continuation to the upside. So even if we do get a little bit more consolidation on XLF, I would not be too concerned, guys, unless we lose these lows right here. If we lose those lows, loss of the weekly uptrend into weekly downtrend and potentially into a little bit of monthly consolidation for your financial names. But as of now, guys, the bulls remain in full control of this sector as well. Moving into healthcare right now, another sector where bulls retain full control. Now, moving on in, daily uptrend is clear as day right now, looking for a daily higher low, anything above this guy right here, 153, looking for the daily higher low for a possible expansion of the daily uptrend. Why do we have this bullish leaning bias? Because we never lost the weekly, guys. Beautiful weekly uptrend, weekly higher lows are set, and possibly looking for a new weekly uptrend leg right now. Now, in the event, guys, we lose these lows, 153, right? Well, of course, that would be a weekly downtrend in motion, and we may just be in for a little bit of monthly consolidation in these markets. Keep in mind, we are not through September seasonality just yet. I always bring up this chart, usually September seasonality to the downside. You guys know September is a very weak month as a whole, right? And usually it always kicks in towards the tail end of the month, which we are in right now. So I'd be very cautious on this one if we start pulling down in a meaningful fashion and a lot of indexes start losing uh, their momentum to the upside and start setting some weekly downtrends. Well, you guys know seasonality is at play and possibly just looking for a little bit of drawdown here through the month of September, maybe even early October, but we should have a very good end to the year. But as of now, guys, as of right now, the bulls retain their full control. Control. So I still remain bullish on these markets, guys, but I will still be very picky in the names that I choose for my trades. As you guys have seen on the channel in the last one to two months, we go, we are very, very picky with the types of trades we take. We are not chasing trades at all time highs. We are waiting for trades on very solid companies that are in very decent pullbacks, such as the ones we've been taking over the most recent month and a half, right? McDonald's, another trade. We took it down here, big support area, touch of the 200 weekly, all the way higher. That was a very good trade. We took Vici as well. The company was down, right? Big support area. We took this one down here, big explosion. Mercado Libre was another one that we smashed on this channel. Very nice. Big range of accumulation, took the trade down here. The rest is pretty much history. Visa and MasterCard, you guys remember me, Harp them all the way down here beautiful trend expansion these are the types of trades that i will continue to make guys i'm not going to keep i'm not going to change i'm not going to start bidding visa up here right no 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 no. the setups we're looking for guys are extended setups that are in weekly or monthly consolidation periods on very solid companies so we're going to stay picky with our trade selection but there are going to be ample opportunities for us in these markets guys moving into smh SMH as well, pulling back a little bit here today and really not doing a good job of breaking above our resistance, right? That resistance ends at about 238, unable to break above right now, guys. So currently rolling over, what are the bulls looking to do? Well, very simply, we're in a daily downturn right there. As you can see, right? Well, simply three legs, nice engulfing move. Now the bulls are looking to set up for a daily higher low. Anything above 214, looking for the daily higher low for possible, possible daily trend conversion over to the bulls. In the event the bears take back way too much of this move, guys, they open the door for the lower high into lower low and possible continuation of this weekly downtrend that we've now been in ever since it started in the later part of the month of July. So semiconductors for me remain a 
pick and choose market, right? I am willing to play this sector, but I'm going to play it very, very carefully and most likely employ the same strategy that I've been using for the past year and a half on the channel, which is short puts, right? Whenever we have big red days on semiconductors, I will be looking to write puts under the market significantly and just gather a lot of that premium, gather a lot of that volatility markup that are in those options, right? So as a whole, semiconductors still relatively weak in relation to the rest of the market right now. They are still your lead bear in the market and will probably remain uh, in that kind of aspect right there, probably at least through the next maybe two, three, four weeks at least. So moving on further, let's jump into the IWM Russell. Russell performing decently today. The rest of the market was red. This one was only up about 0.02%, but they did give back a lot of the move here, guys. The Russell at one point today, was up substantially, right? Almost two and a half percent to the upside and quickly gave back all of those FOMC gains in the later part of the afternoon. But as I've been saying, there could be an argument here for the risk on trade. I must admit, guys, I was not a believer in this trade until we got this interest rate decision. I wanted to hear the Federal Reserve's updated projections, not only for the remainder of this year, but also for 2025. And now that they're signaling that the soft landing is still well on the table and that they're confident in the data that they've been receiving, well, there may just be an opportunity to start bidding in these markets. Now, if the IWM starts pulling back right here, possibly into your moving averages or maybe even lower right 210 all the way down to 208 this is going to be an area where i'm probably going to start bidding uh, on the iwm that being said daily downturn was in motion a huge engulfing move by the bulls so at this point probably looking for a lower high or sorry excuse me a higher low anything above 204 looking for a daily higher low for possible further daily trend continuation as we maybe move into a risk on landscape right speculative landscape nonetheless but could be a very interesting trade. Now, still in the form on the weekly, guys, still in somewhat of a tightening range. So we will see how this week ends. They tried to go for the breakout today, did not get it. If this range tightens up a lot more over the next week of trading, that will be the best case scenario, guys. If we can protect a tightening range above our area of support right there, which is 210 and 208, this one could look good for maybe some later on in the year gains, right? Especially in late October, early November, early December. As we get closer to the newer uh, rate cut cycle as well, this one could be one of the ones that performs actually quite well. So looking forward to see the progression on this one. And I will possibly be building positions, as I said, down here in this lower area. And lastly, moving into the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones down about 0.25% after hitting a new all-time high. A very good performance by then, by them, but may just be a question of a bit of a sell the news event after the rate cuts today. All the markets pretty much displaying the same characteristics, right? So daily uptrend is clear as day right now. Looking for a daily high higher low at this point anything about 40,000 looking for the daily higher low for possible further trend continuation keep an eye on your prior all-time highs this whole range right here guys is going to be very good support for the markets as a matter of fact I could probably just put a little bit of a rectangle right here so it's a bit more clear right this whole zone talking about 41.3 down about 40,900 ish could be a good fallback area for the bulls looking to gather some more strength and momentum before pushing to new all-time highs not looking too bad. And once again, why do we have a bullish leaning bias? Well, because we never lost the weeklies, guys. Beautiful weekly uptrend, possibly just looking for some continuation after a little bit of a normal technical pullback cycle on the daily, right? So the Dow Jones still remains quite strong in these markets as a whole. In terms of TLT, TLT has been pulling back, guys. That's just because, as I was saying in prior videos, especially talking about the positions that I have in my portfolio, guys, this move down on the TLT makes absolute complete sense, right? This trade would have performed very, very well <clears throat> if the Federal Reserve would have presented us with some pulling forward of the rate cut curve, right? If they would have shown a lot more rate cuts than the market was projecting, then this trade probably would have done very, very well. But since it came in line with the expectations, that's why traders are starting to take a little bit of profits on the TLT trade. But I still think this one, guys, naturally moving into the rate cut cycle, this one will progressively move higher. But don't forget, it is not NVIDIA, right? We're not expecting massive, massive, massive moves on the TLT. That would only come if the Fed starts panicking and has to start cutting rates extremely aggressively, right? 
but we should have a very slow progression of the TLT moving higher over time just because your rates are going to start coming down and that is going to start pulling down the longer end uh, of your yields a bit more as well, right? So I'm still in this trade, still bullish, but it could take a little bit more time to play out. We could have gotten a significant boost today if we would have got a little bit of panic from the Fed, but that is not what we got. We got the soft landing scenario, right? So because we got the soft landing scenario, do not expect TLT to go to the absolute moon very, very quickly. If anything, it may just be a slow grind higher, similar to kind of the ones that we've been having uh, ever since the early portion of the month of May, right? So that's pretty much everything for those. In terms of Bitcoin, I like Bitcoin, guys. This one could be one of your prime candidates for some uh, continuation with the risk on trade, right? As you can see, Bitcoin performing very, very well today and could be looking decent for some continuation. Daily uptrend is underway. We are now significantly above all of our short-term moving averages. This being above our moving averages, guys, has not happened for quite some time. As a matter of fact, since the later portion of August when we blasted over here, but now it's looking pretty stable as well. So moving into the weekly, guys, the weekly is looking not too bad either. I'll remind you, what are we trying to do? Trying to reverse this into a new weekly uptrend. The best case scenario is if we start and come back all the way up to about 64. If we can come up, tap 64, it gives the bulls the opportunity to get, to get a two-step recovery process on the weekly time frame going. So Bitcoin is not looking too bad at all, guys. And I will be looking to increase my short-term exposure into Bitcoin because now that we basically have a soft landing on the table, we know that risk on, risk on assets have been kind of paused recently, right? But I've always been of the opinion that these ones should come alive end of 2024 into early 2025. So I will start positioning a bit more aggressively on my Bitcoin trades moving forward, right? I still do maintain, even if we lose the levels, guys, Great time to be buying in for a long-term portfolio, 57 down to 55K. That would be a great accumulation period. But as of now, I will probably be looking to play some of your shorter-term breakout cycles. Now, moving into our big tech names, shall we? So give me a very brief second. I'm moving into Apple right now. So Apple up about 1.8%. Decent day of recovery for Apple. Trying their best, guys, to start recovering uh, this daily downtrend cycle that we've been in, right? So not looking too bad. The size of the bounce is decent. Any pullback, guys, one of two things is going to happen, as a matter of fact. Either we're going to pull right back into our area of overhead resistance and put an end to the daily downtrend, give us a good chance of resetting into a new daily uptrend, or if the move tops out here shortly, well, we have created enough space, guys, that maybe Apple is looking for the two-step recovery process. One thing is for sure, we are reacting very nicely from our area of support, and that is 220 down about 215. Myself, guys, I really can't play Apple up here. I've been through this a number of times on the channel. The valuation is just too high. The revenue is kind of flat year over year, so I'm just not playing this one at all unless unless it comes down to about 205 to 200. If it doesn't, no problem at all. I have tons of Apple shares in my long-term portfolio. For short-term swing trades, however, I think there are stocks with better momentum out there and better valuations as a whole, not only in big tech, but in the rest of the market as well. So Apple, for me, remains a hold. I'm not really looking to play it in terms of short-term swing trades. I just don't see any good risk-reward up here, but I also don't see any red flags for your longer-term bulls either. Moving into AMD right now, AMD pulling back similar to the rest of semiconductors today. So AMD doing pretty much one of the two scenarios that we described on the channel early on in the week, right? This area of resistance, guys, 155 to 160 is an extremely challenging zone for AMD. You can see it back here. We got rejected here as well and was previous support for the market. So this area, guys, is a very, very big one. Now, what is AMD potentially looking to do? Well, if we can't get it done in one clean shot, the bulls may try to make an attempt at getting it done in two shots. So what are we looking for right now? Anything above 132, looking for the daily higher low for a possible new daily uptrend. We had a big daily downtrend going on AMD right here. Nice engulfing move, creating a lot of space. Now it's up to the bulls, guys, to reverse this into a daily uptrend and make a second attempt right here. What I would like to do on AMD is in the event we come down a little bit further here, guys, into the lower 140s, I'm going to be writing short puts below here. 137, 135 could be a great area to be writing some short puts and benefit from a lot of this volatility that's been occurring in semiconductors as a whole. And even if we come back down all the way into our support box, 141, 140, I may even throw some call debit spreads at this trade too. So AMD, not looking too bad, but just understand what's happening right here, getting rejected from resistance and probably trying to go for the two-step recovery process. We'll keep an eye on this one very closely. 
Moving into Amazon right now, Amazon largely flat on the day and getting once again rejected from the overhead resistance area, 190 guys. 190 is very, very, very challenging for Amazon. I know we got through it briefly before getting rejected, but you have to agree, right? This is a very, very big level for this stock continuously getting rejected at it. Now, in the event we start pulling back a little bit lower, no problem at all, guys. Nice daily upturn right here. But if we lose these lows, I know it's not pretty, but in the event we lose these lows, guys, we will be losing the daily uptrend. And then we'll be looking to target this area of support, 182 down about 180 for a little bit of a swing trade attempt, maybe at some higher highs. Why? Because we'd just be looking for a little bit of weekly consolidation here, guys, right? The weekly is in a clear weekly uptrend, and we are possibly looking for that weekly continuation, which is why I say any short-term dips in this area may just be a slight weekly pullback for some trend continuation thereafter, which is why I'm a big fan of possibly looking to play Amazon down here, also within uh, the context of some confluence with our moving averages. Amazon looking very, very good, guys, and the valuation, too, is not looking too bad at all, and this should be one of your record years for profitability and free cash flow for this company. The fundamentals are good. The technicals are good. I love this company, love the stock. I'll be looking to play it a little bit more aggressively in the event we pull back into this support zone down there. Moving into Google right now. So Google also having some decent gains on the day, 0.33% to the upside. Now, it's not a massive move by Google, but at least it's some decent continuation, right? Especially after all this daily downtrend. So daily downtrend was in motion. The most recent last leg of selling has been completely engulfed by the bulls and sets themselves up nicely to be able to set up a daily higher low for the daily trend change. How do you know that the daily the daily move higher is done and we may be looking for that reversal down, guys? Keep an eye on the hourly trend, right? If we were to lose uh, these lows right here tomorrow, right? We would be losing the hourly uptrend and that would mean that your daily consolidation is underway. Then we'd just be looking for the daily higher low for a possible daily trend change attempt by the bulls and a possible uh, recovery in terms of a weekly aspect as well, right? So keep an eye on this, guys. The bulls are looking good, especially on the size of this weekly bounce right here, all the way up to about 618%. That is what we like to see. So in the event that um, we lose this daily move, set back a little bit lower, this could be a decent little swing trade location around the 155, 153 location down here. If we pull back there hard, may just be a nice opportunity to build up some positions for the eventual leg further higher and maybe some continuation on this weekly time frame too. So Google not looking too bad. And in any event, if the markets really fall apart and everything like that, and if we do start re-challenging this lower zone, guys, you already know, right? 152 down to 143, great location for some long-term buys on Google and even possibly adding to my leap call options that I already have. So not looking too bad on that stock as a whole. Moving into Meta right now, Meta up about 0.3%, not too bad of a day for Meta, setting almost, almost actually, you know what? I think they actually did set a new all-time high today. Let me just confirm. Uh, high of the day was 544.20 and the high here was, yeah, actually new all-time high by Meta set up today, but not the prettiest one, right? We do not have some decent space created just yet. So arguably you can say that even though we are above our big area of support, guys, it's the same as the last couple of times, right? We don't have a significant, um, significant margin of error to work with just yet. That could quickly change, though. If Meta has a good day tomorrow, well, we could pull up into the 550 location. That would create some good space. And we may just be setting up, guys, for one of my favorite trade uh, setups, which is the breakout retest of a prior range of resistance. And this is a big one, right? If we can really clear this one uh, in a nice fashion, come back on, sit on it, it will be very, very solid support. Trust me on that one, guys. So it could be a nice breakout, retest and run attempt for that. I'll be looking for that type of trade. And in the event the markets really do fall off tomorrow and in the next few days, well, we may it may just be a case, guys, where Meta, similar to the prior times, just starts pulling back and once again gets trapped in this lower location right there. We'll keep a close eye on it, but I like this one as a whole, guys, right? For the breakout retest trade, that'll be one single trade. And then the event the markets really start falling off and we revisit the lower 500s, I'll be interested in taking that trade too. Because at that point, we just might be looking for somewhat of a weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation, right? So I'll be looking in the event we pull back a little bit further here, anything in the lower 500s, 507, 505, 
could be a nice little swing trade entry opportunity for some potential further trend continuation on Meta. I think this one is really just getting, it's curling up, guys. In my humble opinion, it's curling up, getting ready to explode. The valuation on it is super, super cheap right now. And look at this weekly MACD, right? We've been in an extended drawdown period on the MACD since the month of April, and now it's starting to round the curve. So I think the momentum is finally starting to shape up for this all-time high breakout on Meta. So not looking too bad at all, in my humble opinion. Now, moving on to Microsoft. Microsoft pulling back hard today, 1% to the downside, but that's normal, guys. Microsoft has had a very nice past six, seven, eight days of trading. So now just looking to set up for the daily higher lows. Daily downtrend was in motion, big engulfing move. Now we need to set up for the daily higher lows. Where are we looking to do it right now, guys? Well, this whole area that was previous resistance for the markets, right, should be newfound support for the bulls. And look, all of our short term moving averages are right below us as well. So this zone comes all the way down to our prior area right here, about the 425. So I would not be surprised if Microsoft tries to form a base of support down here and goes for the daily uptrend continuation trade. Looking like a very decent setup, guys. If Microsoft pulls back into this area, I may be tempted to throw some call debit spreads at this trade for some potential trend continuation, probably with a little bit of time on them. Why? Because we have the weekly uptrend in motion, guys. So any pullback right now is probably going to be for some weekly trend continuation, moving a lot higher, probably starting to challenge the all-time highs, maybe towards the end of the year, probably targeting uh, late October into early November uh, for the later part of this possible rally into the all-time highs. But Microsoft is looking very, very good right now for a swing trade setup down in this lower location. Moving into it, Netflix right now. So Netflix also not looking too bad today, 2.33% to the downside. The reason I say it's not looking too bad, we are still holding our relative range of all-time highs right now, guys, right? Netflix has been kind of unable to break out of this 700 location right now, right? And we're kind of just tapering back on uh, on some of the price action. So as a whole, Netflix still has some good space. What are we trying to do right now? The bulls put in a very nice move. They're trying to set up for the daily higher lows for a possible, possible daily trend shift to the bulls higher. Why do we have this bias right now, guys? Well, we're pulling back into the overhead prior resistance. We broke out of it, coming down into it as support and looking for the trend expansion. It's kind of looking like meta, right? And also the weekly is not looking too bad for some trend expansion as well. But in the event we start pulling back here, guys, and we lose all of that price action, well, I will be looking to play Netflix down here, guys. 655 down about 630. So one of two trades is the one that I'm looking for on Netflix right now. Either a breakout to, towards 720 and then retest of the high end of this range. Could be a beautiful breakout retest. Entry would go here, stops below here, and then we're targeting probably the 750 psychological. Or in the event we start losing some of this price action and we consolidate on the weekly a little bit more, I will be looking to play this dip down here, guys, because at that point, we're probably just going to be looking out for some monthly higher lows for some eventual further trend continuation. And Netflix, for all intents and purposes, guys, is fairly recession proof. Now, moving into NVIDIA. NVIDIA down with the rest of semiconductors today. And I'm liking this one, guys. I'm liking this setup. If NVIDIA continues getting weak down here, it's going to free up so many short put opportunities for next week in the lower $100 range. And this is really where I want to buy this stock. So I'll be looking to write some short puts down there to replicate a synthetic buy on the stock. Now, moving into the analysis. Well, we obviously know that, Net, uh, that NVIDIA has had a very good bounce so far, but we got rejected at the 120 to 115 level. Now, what are the bulls trying to do? They're trying to set up for a daily higher low, for a daily trend change attempt. But beware if the bulls give back too much of this move here, guys. Well, the best case scenario is probably just a tightening range between this support and this resistance. So that would be a tightening range scenario for NVIDIA. And the worst case, of course, is just completely rolling over into the daily downtrend and, of course, into further weekly downtrending scenarios as well, culminating in a very large support zone. This is roughly 105 all the way down to about $93. That's really the area that I really want to position myself for NVIDIA, NVIDIA moving into the future. So I do think that, that is a highly likely scenario, guys, where you may just maybe just tighten up, right? It could be a fairly wide range of accumulation too, but I think it might look a lot like last fall, right? So that is pretty much the analysis on NVIDIA. Very tough to know which one this way will break. However, what I'll be looking to do once again, as I said, guys, if we pull back a little bit further, think maybe 110, 109, 108, probably going to be looking to write some short puts, 103 down about 100, as low as I can get while still getting some good premium on, uh, on those options, right? Now, moving into Tesla, Tesla down about 0.29% today. Uh, surprisingly, well, actually, after the close, they're responding very well. Tesla was actually up uh, significantly after the rate cut announcement, guys, because this one is obviously very, very rate sensitive. 
This one and solar stocks responded the best to the rate cuts today. You can see this huge move to the upside before kind of giving it back with the rest of the markets. But I think this one, if uh, there is some continued bullish momentum for rate sensitive stocks, I think this one does have a good chance, guys, of continuing its bullish momentum possibly into later parts of September and even into early October. Uh, Tesla obviously has its delivery numbers coming in at the end of the month and then earnings and the RoboTax event in the mid of the month of October. So I would not be surprised if Tesla is able to maintain some of this price action right here and possibly move a little bit higher, right? It doesn't look the best because right now we're failing to break out of the 235. But as a whole, guys, this stock, um, you know, interest rate sensitive plays like this should, if the market starts, if the market goes on a rally, right? These should be your outperformers, which is why I did close my Tesla hedge over the course of the day today uh, after this afternoon when I saw the reaction to uh, the interest rate cut cycle. Well, I told myself, you know what? <clears throat> The market's reacting very nicely to this. Tesla was going to be a hedge for me in the event that uh, Jerome Powell was very, very bearish on the markets, hinting at a possible, um, you know, that the soft landing may not be on the table and hinting at the fact that they might be behind the curve, then Tesla would have most likely plummeted. But now that they're saying the soft landing is still on the table and they're adopting more accommodative rate cut policy, right? I think shorting interest rate sensitive plays is a bit of a risky endeavor right now. So that's why I kind of exited my, uh, my hedge on Tesla at a loss, of course, since we obviously got this one, um, you know, down here in this lower range right there. Not too big of a loss, but, you know, fairly happy with the way we were hedged into this. It could have gone either way, but that's pretty much on the side for my uh, my own trades right now. Looking for the continuation of this daily uptrend, right? So any move lower, going to be looking for a higher low. Anything above 210, just looking for a higher low for potential further trend continuation. And if we get that infamous break of 235, as I've been saying, we're probably heading up all the way to about 245, 250 for the next break. And the weekly time frame doesn't look too bad either, right? Nice weekly uptrend is being maintained by the bulls. So we will see how the price action evolves over the next couple of weeks. Very tough for me to play Tesla right now because we're in between, right? We're really mid, about midway between the 185 and the high at about the 270 range, literally in the middle. So it's very tough for me to play call options right here because the upside is fairly limited and the stop loss location is fairly uh, far away to the downside, right? But it's also tough for me to play some puts because the risk is pretty much getting a break all the way up to about 250 and the and the downside, um, you know, towards the next target is about that 205, 210. So we're kind of right in the middle, guys. So Tesla for me right now is kind of a no trade just because of the fact that it's literally right in the middle of our weekly range. Moving into Palantir lastly. So Palantir down about 0.19% on the day, but up in the after hours. So Palantir also trying to support its gains as best as it can. We're coming into kind of the last area of resistance above us, right? So 38 to $39 is the last area for the bulls to break in the event the markets are weak we'll just focus on this guys probably just looking for a daily higher low how do you know that this daily run higher is finished i was saying it yesterday right watch for the loss of the hourly time frame no loss of the hourly time frame this is a double bottom right here right in the event you see a loss of the hourly time frame breaking yesterday or even today's lows that's when you will know the daily move higher is finished and most likely looking for a little bit of daily consolidation. Even if we do get daily consolidation, guys, most likely looking for a daily higher low for further trend continuation. Where I'll be looking to play Palantir, guys, is in the event we start retesting this lower range, $34, $33, about the midpoint right here, right? This whole area right here, if we come down into it, I'll be looking to play some short puts a little bit below it, right? Think $32, $31. That's where I would like to play Palantir because at that point, guys, what would we be looking for? We'd just be looking for a weekly higher low for possible further trend continuation. You can see that area I was highlighting. That's this one right here. So a little bit of a pullback down here before another leg higher could be in the cards for Palantir. That is the type of trading stra uh, strategy that I will be looking to adopt on this stock. Very tough for me to buy Palantir up here, right? It's just the risk reward is just not favorable. Overhead resistance is too close and the downside risk is fairly notable, right? So that's pretty much everything I had for you guys in terms of today's video. Sorry if it was a bit longer than expected, but if you did enjoy the video, guys, consider dropping a like. Would appreciate it for the growth of the channel and for the YouTube algorithm, of course. And second, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. We're finally above our 3,000 subscriber, subscriber milestone, so let's continue smashing those milestones together, and I would very much look forward to seeing you in one of our future videos. We do these every single Monday through Friday after the close. And as usual, guys, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments section.
anything you want. If you want me to look at a, a specific stock, technical analysis, an options trade that you want a second opinion on, a macroeconomic discussion, especially after today's rate cut cycle, please let me know, guys. Anything you want down below in the comments, and I usually answer you within the first 24 hours. So take care, guys. Have a very good rest of the week. I will see you tomorrow after the close. Take care and peace.